Okay, let's get started. So how are you doing? So thank you for joining this study crew, club. My name is Kunte Kim. I'm a, I will be in what is called a, called a facilitator, facilitator of this study group. So actually because I first suggested this book for the study group, uh, study group. So yeah, welcome. And then uh, uh, I think that, uh, do, I, do I say it correctly? Like, a, like a Ricardo Serrano, is that your name? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. So, Hi. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? So, uh, yeah, maybe what time is it? What time is it over there? Because so where are you from? Because I'm, yeah. I'm actually, yeah, I'm from, I'm from South Korea, but the thing is, I, I currently live in the US. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm here in Orlando, Florida. Oh, uh, okay. If, if, if you know about, about Mickey Mouse, you know, we are the land of. Yeah. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually in Georgia. So, we are, the, okay. we are pretty, we are, the, we are the neighboring, neighboring states. So, Okay. Right, so we we have the same the same time then. Yeah, <laughs> seven yeah, we have the same time zone, so Eastern yes. Eastern time. So right, okay, so so for you actually, I I speak, I particularly say thank you very much for joining this study group. Like a, right, like it's a seven a.m. today, so it's a quite early in the morning, and then uh, the mm -hmm. uh the thing that you actually join this club, even if it is very early. In the morning, that means you are the very uh, passionate to join this club, and uh, you are very interested in studying the machine learning using R. So, yeah, I also love to love to hear, uh, love to study this book because of the, I'm not I'm not familiar with the machine learning, especially mm -hmm. some kind of how to use R for the machine learning purposes, and also I. Uh, I also have uh, several projects that uses the machine learning approaches right now, and then it is also another that that is also another another reason I would like to learn machine learning in R, because I have uh, some projects that I have to work on by using machine learning approaches. So I think that it would be great if I can run R, because uh, R is my my prime. My first first statistical languages that I that whenever mm. I do the analysis, so so if I so I think that it would be great if I can uh to apply machine uh maybe use the machine learning techniques in R for my for my projects. So that's the reason why I actually uh, mm. I actually requested this study group and then. Uh, yeah. So, and also so, today, yeah, yeah. yeah if you uh, so uh, I, uh, you know, sh share with you that uh, I started uh -huh. learning data science with uh, with R mm -hmm. uh, on online with uh, you know the Coursera uh, data science certification, mm -hmm. and um, I've been I've been you know learning and applying some concepts in my job and also in different. Uh, non-profit uh, project mm, okay. um, and this is my fourth uh, book club okay mm, okay the thing that it, it got my attention because I already had in my you know in my github uh, repositories I had mm -hmm. this you know this reference uh, the mm -hmm. hands-on machine learning with art yeah and the topics that I uh, that I picked you know to to present mm -hmm. are topics that I already you know mm -hmm. cover in the other book clubs Oh, okay. Okay. So, for example, I chose, for example, uh, uh, linear linear regression because uh, I already already done that in the introduction to statistical learning. Yeah. But I wanted to see, you know, what else, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what else is there, you know, to learn in terms of linear regression, because yeah, that's a right. basic, a fundamental and and traditional model. Yeah. And right. the other one, also decision trees, you know, I also cover in that in the book club. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and also feature engineer. I think feature engineering was the one that I picked, not, not linear regression. Mm. Feature engineering, because we already did a book club on the book by Max Kahn, mm -hmm. uh, the creator of Carrot, Carrot, 
mm-hmm. and Teddy Bottles. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a book back in 2015 on feature engineering. Mm. So, uh, you know, there's some things that I can bring from the book to the, you know, to that, to that chapter that could be, mm. you know, that, that could be valuable to your, uh, to your practice. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's okay. great. Yeah, that's great. So, so, okay. So, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And then, mm-hmm. and then we, so can you, uh, could you see the, my screenshot like uh, that I just share? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, that, you, you bring the, you know, the, the, markup. the website. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The mark of a, uh, uh, bar. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, this is uh, for my handwriting cause, uh, right. do you, do, uh, do you see the, mm-hmm. this little line and then uh, my writing? Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So in that case, that's fine. Okay. So I can also erase in this. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah. Cause, uh, today, yeah, today is uh, just kind of the first day of our meeting and then, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, it doesn't take too much time. Maybe today I'm gonna cover the what the book is about, and then right. also I'm gonna cover the chapter one, introduction mm-hmm. to the machine learning, and then maybe you actually in the in Slack you already mentioned that you're gonna do the chapter three, and chapter right. nine, right? Chapter so, nine, yes, yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to cover chapter two next week, because mm-hmm. uh, right now. Just, just you and I, we have only two people in the study group. I hopefully, I think mm-hmm. that there is a 16 member, 16, 16 persons actually joined this book club. But the thing is today is the first day of the class and then, uh, maybe they might need a little bit more time to adjusting the right. meeting, making this mm-hmm. meeting as a their regular basis. So, so anyway, so. Today, I'm gonna just briefly cover about the practice, about the, what the, this book is about, and then what I think about the facilitating and leading this study group. And then I'm gonna cover the chapter one, okay? Mm-hmm. All sure. right. Yeah, right. so, yeah. So, <laughs> as you can see, this is the title, Hands on the Machine Learning with R. So, as a, as a, uh, as a title indicates, it is a hands on. So that means this, what I really like about this book is that this book actually really aims at to help, help learners to help learners with a more practical skill that they can use for their, their actual projects or actual statistical task. So that's the, what I really like about this book. So so when you, when we scroll down in here and then, okay. So who gonna be read this? So as you can see here, it is a practice, practitioner's guide, which is the, for the more aiming for about the learn about the approaches to read the, in terms of the, some kind of a practical purposes. So there is a lot of example and then uh, this will actually deal with the real data set that we to learn about the several different kinds of approaches. And then, and then this one, this book is also kind of a, not the introduction to R because this is a machine learning is actually kind of like a very modern and advanced and emerging data science technique that we now use for variety, variety of purposes. So actually this book actually assumed that the, you are already familiar with the R, basic R principle and the basic R programming. And then, and then actually in here, like, a, like a advanced R is also available in, in the, as a HTML file, like a website and then R for data science too. And then uh, elements of the statistical learning this book and then a computer age on the statistical inference and deep learning, all of the, these books actually are very uh, invariable in PDFs, 
or maybe just kind of a website. So yeah, maybe when you click these links, you can you can get the uh, their website or their PDFs. So you can just be free to check it. I personally recommend uh, if you don't uh, check it, I personally recommend the this book like I for data science, like the uh, weekend. Mm -hmm. And also, also computer age and statistical inference is a very good book for the data science purposes. So these are the kind of very good book. And then also elements of the statistical learning is also very good even if it is not the kind of a very kind of a basic book for the for the analysis it is very difficult and very difficult book to learn something from those books but these are the very highly recommendable and then uh, I'm not gonna cover too much about the YR because we already know the R is a kind of open source software for the variety of the statistical purposes. But the thing is, I would like to say is uh, based on the tidyverse for the common data, maybe not the analytics, just kind of a data management and data cleanup activities, maybe H2O and Ranger and XBoost and IML and P, uh, PDP and VIP packages gonna be used for this book. I think that I'm not familiar with all of the, uh, these these packages because I don't know yet. But the thing is, hopefully, these are the kind of packages uh, maybe commonly used in this book for the for the machine learning purposes. So I'm kind of okay. very yeah I can, excited. I, I can to, tell you, I can tell you more or less, you know, what they you know uh -huh. what they're about because yeah, sure. I, I, work, yeah. I work with them. Uh -huh. uh, you know, the, the tidyverse is a collection of uh, you know libraries. For example, yeah, the flyer. Right. Yeah, I know that that it, it was precisely it was developed uh, mainly by uh, by Hadley Hadley Wickham. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a way to try to you know minimize the effort yeah. of uh, you know manipulating uh, data frames. Yeah, right. Okay. In a, a mo yeah. more like a like a, like a SQL, you know, it has a SQL uh, flavor uh, yeah. to it. Yeah, then like, uh, by using yeah. this this operator exactly. as the, a, the piping, yeah, yeah as also, a uh, as a as a pipeline. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then H2O, it's a, it's a package. Usually you use it for auto ML. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you, it gives you the, the, you know, the, the advantage uh, mm -hmm. that the package with minimal information, you can mm -hmm. develop, uh, let's say 50 models. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it also it, it does stacking also. Okay. So what it's going to do is that it's going to give you for for that amount of time that you're going to process it because you can tailor it to that let's say 50 minutes give me mm -hmm. give me uh four, 40 models okay mm -hmm. for this uh data set uh mm -hmm. could be regression could be classification mm -hmm. etc mm -hmm. and then you can uh hunt uh pinpoint those mm -hmm. models that are performing the best and then and then work, work with them mm -hmm. a okay. ranger ranger cell library based on random forest mm -hmm. uh the 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 good thing about ranger is that it's very fast okay usually random mm. forest it's uh you know uh, mm. it, it, it takes a lot of resources from the computer and mm -hmm. it's kind of you know slow the random mm. forest per se the ranger has the has the algorithm to you know really speed up you know mm. the, the, the random execution the random mm -hmm. forest execution mm -hmm. so it's a very important package mm. especially for tidy models mm. then the xg boost is the extreme gradient a boost right which is an mm -hmm. algorithm that is very popular in yeah. the, especially in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh you know to develop uh especially in classification to develop mm -hmm. uh the models that are very you know very efficient mm -hmm. and it can improve usually improves you know your accuracy or your or your metric okay mm -hmm. it's, it's a very uh it's a very important package also another package that i have used mm -hmm. that is kind of faster than mm -hmm. xgboost right now is mm -hmm. called light gbm okay oh. and i can bring that in the feature engineer i can bring that because oh. light gbm there's oh. a there's a library called bonsai okay uh -huh. like in the japanese the tree bonsai the little tree mm -hmm. <laughs> okay uh that library uh, lets you run light gbm in a tidy model uh, mm -hmm. uh framework okay mm -hmm. 
So okay. SGBoost, LightGBM, uh, those are the, the go-tos when you want to do extreme uh, gradient boosting. Mm. Then IML, PDP, and VIP are used mm -hmm. more for explaining your model. Okay, mm -hmm. for example, VIP is called variable import importance. Mm -hmm. Okay, package. That, that's what mm -hmm. authority means, the, the acronym. Mm -hmm. So you can use it to check which are the predictors mm -hmm. that the machine learning is using uh, more. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, to, to do that, to do the prediction. Mm -hmm. Then the PDP is partial dependence plot. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. part of the, you know, explanation model. And mm -hmm. IML it's also a package to do uh, variable importance, uh, to do explainability on those, you know, black box models like random forest, SGBoost, mm. and all that. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, that, that, you. so that, that, there you have it. Also, that there's, an, there's other ones, for example, Dalek. Okay. I don't know oh. if you have seen Doctor Who, <laughs> oh. the series. Okay. Uh, the Dalek is, uh, you know, one of these villains, you know, in the, in, in the series. And, mm. People that are familiar with that, you know, they uh, produce a package called Daleks. Okay, oh. and it has the figure of the of, of the little villain, right? Uh, the Dalek one, and Daleks also is used for uh -huh. uh, machine learning uh, uh -huh. ex ex explanation also. Okay, okay? I'll I'll, okay. I'll post it in the chat. <laughs> the, uh, the link. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let's see. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's see. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, and also, actually, I'm not, I'm not kind of familiar with the machine learning approaches. But the thing mm -hmm. is, in here, actually, uh, like a linear regression and logistic regressions, and then a regularized regression and multi-adaptive and k-nearest waiver, mm -hmm. decision tree, bagging, random forest, gradient boosting. And then uh, maybe supported back to machine, etc. And then I think that maybe maybe from four to nine and ten and eleven is uh, quite familiar for me. But mm -hmm. the thing is, I haven't used uh, this kind of uh, analysis in my practical level. But the thing is, uh, currently what I actually working on is the what is called the multi uh, uh multi like uh, label label mm -hmm. classification approaches right it right. is a uh, kind of like uh, one is called the unsupervised uh, no no supervised the learning technique that allows mm -hmm. us to to guess uh, uh, predict the sum of the attribute based on the based on the multi-level uh, data structure so I actually mm -hmm. using the u m u l t i and then MLR, and then uh, mm -hmm. there is also called MDR packages. These are actually MDR packages is a package for the clean of the, these kind of a multi-level data structure. And then uh, U multi and then MLR is a kind of like a more, uh, packages for the developing the multi-label classification. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of recently using the, these kind of approaches and then uh, that's the also reason why I Okay, make a decision to okay, let's learn about the machine learning right. uh, more deeply and then try to figure out uh, how I can use this one, this technique more for my research or for my projects. So mm -hmm. that's the my 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 goal from this study group. So in here, actually the other the other bottom part is just kind of a brief explanation about the what's the symbol is about and then uh, just kind of a software information so it seems like there is a lot of software they actually using to develop this kind of a page web pages and maybe book hopefully we can cover this one but it let's see yeah maybe it is a it is a 22 chapter so i hopefully hopefully we can cover these kind of packages quite well when we study this book. Mm -hmm. So let's move to the chapter one. So chapter one is uh, just kind of a very simple, simple introduction to the machine learning. So which is we already familiar with because uh, 
I think that you and I already hear about the, what is the supervised learning and unsupervised learning approaches. Cause, uh, but the thing right. is uh, just kind of a refresh. The supervised learning is more like a predict predictive purposes, which means, for example, if we use the linear regressions, maybe we can we can use the linear regression like a traditional kind of a perspective, like a conventional statistics. We actually use the linear regression to explore the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Relationship between the variable, like uh, especially among uh, independent variable and, and our dependent variable, right? But mm -hmm. in here, like a machine learning and data science purposes, we actually focusing on to use the linear regression as a more like a, more like a predictions. Mm -hmm. So which means rather than to focusing on the relationships, relationships, we actually try to try to optimize optimize our model. For, for strong prediction power. So when we say about the optimized model, and also when we say about the, for the prediction, strong prediction power, actually there is a two things we have to learn about. Cause when we say about the optimized model, which means actually, in the traditional approaches, when we actually focus on the relationship among the ind independent and dependent variable, we actually using the what is called the p values, right? Like uh, which independent variable is uh, statistically significant to increase or decrease the dependent variable. But the thing is, when you when we say about the optimized model. It is actually very related to the more like a prediction purposes. So that means sometimes even if p value is not the statistical significant, but the thing is that that variable is a uh, that variable actually contribute to the what is called the precision or accuracy of the of the model for the prediction purposes. We actually include uh, that variable for our model as a, in terms of the optimization. So that is a very important perspective because uh, when we try to understand the, what the interaction or relationship among the independent and dependent variable, that's the, our research goal. Maybe p-values or maybe goodness of fit test or maybe t-score t or or maybe residual residual plot kind of thing is a very helpful and then very useful to understand the relationship and then also find the good fit. And also when we think about the relationship among the independent and dependent variable, we actually focusing on the using the using the data data set as a whole, right? We do not, we do not uh, split our data set. We using, we using our data set as a whole, right? But when we try to do the prediction purposes, that means we have, to, our goal is to optimize the model and then to optimize the model, we have to split, split the data set. Actually, Normally, we actually split the data set, what is called the training data set. And then uh, the other one is the test data set. Sometimes, depending on the, our research purposes, we also uh, split the data set into the three categories, which is uh, more like a validation, the other data set for the validation data set. Mm -hmm. but, but the thing is, to optimize the model for the prediction purposes, what we have to do is that we have to train the model first to so that we can get the more precise and more accurate, accurate prediction values. And then 
when we apply to the test the data set, we actually testing the these precision and accuracy data set after training the, our model. So that means what is the real different, big difference between the like uh, inference statistic and machine learning kind of approaches is uh, in case of the inference statistics, we usually focusing on the interaction and relationship between the independent and dependent variable and also using the data set as a whole, entire data set in, as a whole. So that means if we have uh, like a uh, 100 sample size as a data set, we use all of them to get the relationship based on the, our existing data set. And then what's the relationship between the independent and dependent variable. But for the prediction purposes, maybe assuming that we have a uh, 100 sample size uh, for our data set, maybe to train the, our model, we gonna use in the 80 data set for the training, like the 80% of the data set for the training, and then 20% uh, of the data set for the test to, to get the more st strong prediction power, right? So, so these are the kind of main differences. And then uh, what is called the supervised learning is actually more focusing on the prediction model side. So in here, like Kuhn and Johnson actually mentioned about this the kind of a process of the developing mathematical tool and model that generate the accurate prediction, accurate and actually precise. Because uh, maybe in the later, later chapter, maybe we can learn about uh, what is called uh, computer metrics, right? So especially for the linear regression approaches, we actually like, a, like a, some kind of a binary kind of approaches like a true or false, right? And then uh, these are actually TT, and then uh, this is the TF, and then FT and FF. Actually, this diagonal walls is uh, this one actually determines about the, our precision of the model, but the uh, uh, force, force, this is actually like a force positive, right? Force positive, and this is actually force negative. Mm -hmm. This one is actually determined about the how inaccurate or how biased our, our model would be. So based on the, these kind of confusion metrics is actually can, we can also make a plot for the uh, ROC curve. And then based on the ROC curve under the ROC curve, like uh, maybe for example, like this, and then under the, this area, we actually call the AOC curve, which is the determine about the our, what is called the, uh, 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 in the relationship kind of a space, uh, kind of a goodness of fit kind of a modeling approaches. So anyway, so supervised learning is the prediction purposes. And then uh, this one is actually, what is the big thing about the supervised learning is uh, we actually have a very clear, already classified outcome, outcome variable, right? Mm -hmm. So without this outcome or without target variable, we cannot using the supervised uh, supervised learning. So for example, like uh, using custom attribute, that means we already know, we already have a known data set about the custom attribute and home attribute and employee attribute, patient's attribute, production attributes. And then, and then we can try to collect, what is the goal of the supervised learning is that we just try to collect what is called the predictor variable that are contribute to predict, predicting these kind of attribute more correctly. So that's the kind of what the supervised learning is about. And then, and then in here, when you're looking at the regression problem, this one is a kind of, a, kind of a things like a sales price 
like a z axis is uh, this one is actually outcome variable and then uh, to predict uh, these sales prices we use the years built and then a uh, square footage as uh, our predictors that we think are contribute to the determining the sales price and then uh, these uh, these are actually allows us to the three dimensional plot like this maybe for example and then uh maybe maybe i think that we can also cover the cover cover in the maybe later in the linear regression sessions maybe when we try to think about the, what the error term would be that might be in in case of the, this one maybe we can get get the, these kind of uh, like a very three dimensional type of a uh, type of the uh error kind of a uh plot 3d plot and then uh, we actually what is the we gonna do is uh we actually try to develop the model that has a very minimal minimum minimum kind of a kind of error like a like an error for the predictions so we're gonna cover this one maybe hopefully in the later sections and then uh, the other thing is what is called the classification problem we can also use the uh, supervised learning process so for example if we know about the yes or no questions about the, our outcome variable maybe x1 and x2 and x3 gonna be the possible predictor that allows us to predict the which observation gonna be yes and which observation which observation gonna be no for the predictions. So the so supervised learning means that if we have a already already known known outcome variable, we can use the, these kind of approaches and then by training the model we can actually accurately predict about the more uh, attributes to the outcome variable. So that means whenever we have a new data set, that model is gonna be allows us to predict predict our attribute or our outcome variable through the, these kind of uh, approaches. So any questions so far or anything? Uh, yes, uh, I just want to clarify uh -huh. that in the regression problem, uh -huh. uh, you can go a little bit up. Yeah, here. The regression problem, uh, the outcome that we're uh -huh. trying to predict is numeric. Yeah, right. No, right? Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, you know, in R, uh, the type uh, uh -huh. could be could be like a double, you know, float, mm -hmm. uh, float, or even uh, a, a, a whole a whole round round number. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's going to be numeric in in mm -hmm. terms. Yeah. And in the linear regression. You're going to see that what we're going to do is, uh, you know, fit the best line that yeah. minimizes uh, yeah. a, a cost function, right? In in mm -hmm. this case, mm -hmm. the least square uh, errors uh, function. Yeah. Um, what happens is that that line, what it means really, yeah. it means mm -hmm. that you are predicting really an average. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you you usually are not going to do well predicting mm. a specific number mm. because each of those, you know, if you segment that line, each of those lines, it has like a, you know, like a, like a Gaussian distribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. That it has mm -hmm. a mean which coincides with a line. And then it, you know, it has, you know, a variation, you know, mm. with the, with the standard deviation. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's one thing that we have to be, be clear. Uh, yeah. with uh, with the linear regression you know type there mm -hmm. are other algorithms that also do regression okay mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. like a and you can use it the the mm -hmm. nearest neighbors you can use it for mm -hmm. regression and also yeah. you can use decision trees and you can use uh, uh, gradient boosting for regression mm -hmm. but in the linear regression model which is the the first model that you you know that, 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 that you learn mm -hmm. usually, uh, what you're trying to do is trying to get the best fit of that line, and that line is going to be kind of an average. Okay, mm. that's why, you know, if you go back to the history, 
of the mm -hmm. people that that invented really uh, uh, this type of algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, they they name it regression because it was a regression to the mean. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what it means: regression to the mean. In other words, we are mm -hmm. going to say that that mean is the best possible value to explain, you know, all this, uh, you know, uh, uh, noisy, uh, yeah. noisy, a noisy outcome. Okay, mm -hmm. in the classification, the thing is. Uh, clear to understand is that instead of a numeric outcome, it's going to be a categorical, a label, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, it could be, um, uh, like, like it says in the, you know, in one of the, one of the bullets, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, customer churn, okay? Does the customer mm -hmm. uh, stays with us, you know, buying, buying stuff or not, mm -hmm. okay? So that's a measure <laughs> of, of churning, of, of, of turnover. Mm -hmm. does the customer buy our products or not mm -hmm. okay so it's kind of a in this case you know to reduce it to the minimum it's kind of a binary outcome but mm -hmm. as you mentioned also it will have also multiple labels which yeah. which could be a multiple classification like mm -hmm. they say they are you know using a lighter scale the zero to five or mm -hmm. whatever uh there's an interesting uh data set i don't know if they use it but it's mm -hmm. a the, there's an interesting data set about the the wine uh, they just said the wine quality mm -hmm. and the scale that they use the label that they use is from three which is the you know the worst uh, wine quality to mm -hmm. eight okay yeah. which is a which is the best mm -hmm. and then you know there's a couple of uh of methods that you can use to try to improve your your model in terms of trying to determine from mm -hmm. the characteristics of the wine you know alcohol content acidity uh, you know, uh, uh, taste, etc. Uh, you can then classify by those parameters and classify if the wine is a, is a three is a classification three wine or a classification eight or in between. Okay, mm -hmm. so it kind of discrete in in that way. It's kind of a discrete label, right? Because you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like a Likert mm -hmm. scale, but mm -hmm. in, in a discrete uh, fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's one of the things that you know it, it, it comes right off, right, right off the bat that regression is for numerical classification is for for label for a label yeah. for a categorical and it has yeah. to be you know a certain outcome okay it cannot yeah. be something in between mm -hmm. like in in the regression uh, problem yeah right yeah actually because k is a kind of like a view we actually say what is called the ordinary variable mm -hmm. with the uh, with the category with the weight right. so actually because k is a kind of like a little bit special type of the multinomial but the thing is yeah in here in this we actually say about the because k is the kind of example for the multinomial which is a positive too but the thing is uh, when we say about the ordinal variable we also have the category at the same time the baby between zero and one and two and three and four and five there is actually what is called interval. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, in case of the ordinal, we don't actually hard to define about the, what is the internal interval is the defined. But the thing is uh, in the numerical, when we say about the numerical or maybe continuous variable, when right. we say about the one, two, three, four, five, maybe between one and two is the check difference is one. And then a two and three is the difference is one. Actually, these kind of a uh, uh, difference is actually clearly defined, you know. And then also, what is the main characteristic about the numerical things is uh, there is a clear definition about the zero value. But in ordinal, it is very abstract or sometimes very hard to define about what the zero is about. Like uh, for example. Maybe when we say about the, how do you feel today? Mm -hmm. You just score zero to five. Maybe you right. might say four or you might say three, but the thing mm -hmm. is we cannot tell the difference between the, what's the difference between the three and four because the daddy is actually depend on the respondent, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. That means the ordinal variable is a kind of a very specific type of the multinomial, you know? 
So, 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 and and also it is very different from the numerical and continuous variable. So, so that means actually, I actually personally don't like about the why they act, why why the authors actually set the because mm -hmm. care as a multinomial as an example. Maybe mm -hmm. we can actually say about the multinomial is uh, maybe when we say about the, what do you what uh, today maybe for the fisher fisherman maybe today what kind of fish do you do you want to get the most maybe we can say salmon mm -hmm. or maybe maybe trout mm -hmm. or maybe maybe the other fish I don't know the name but these are the kind of uh, what is called a multinomial example like a uh, like uh, this clear example, like uh, not the kind of a Likert scale, because uh, in in this case, we do not have uh, any kind of interval or weight between the between the these categories. This one is uh, just kind of a label. Mm -hmm. There is uh, no any weight or no value in it. These are actually exactly what is called the uh, exactly what is called the multinomial kind of example. But when we say about the Likert case, uh, we usually say about the design the ordinal. It is a categorical, but the thing is, it also has the weight and also order. It also has the order. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, so zero is the maybe we can say negative or maybe weakest, weakest, mm -hmm. and then maybe five is the positive sometimes and the strongest, strong, strongest. So. So there is actually some kind of order and weight, but the thing is so we cannot tell exactly define the what's the, what's the difference between the zero and one. And also it is very hard to define the, what the zero is about. But in case of the numerical and continuous variable, like for example, when we measuring about the height or weight, right? Mm -hmm. Zero is the clearly defined because uh, zero is the no height. And zero is a no weight, and then a uh, uh, zero and one kilogram. There is a one pound. There is a definitely clear difference between the zero zero pound and one pound, right? So that is actually what is called the continuous and numerical variable. And then uh, those are the those are the variable we usually use for the regressions, like a linear regression, etc., or regression problem. And then a uh, Likert and then uh, that those kind of a labeling one is the classification problem. So that's the thing. And then uh, in case of the unsupervised learning is the uh, just kind of a, if we don't have a known outcome variable, we use the unsupervised learning. So that means we, we actually target variable is actually unknown. Actually, by training the model, our focus is uh, kind of like, uh, get to know about the attribute of the target variable and outcome variable. That's the kind of what is called the supervised, unsupervised learning. So for example, like a clustering analysis or maybe dimension reductions, like uh, you said about the decision tree or random forest. These are the kind of like, uh, very typical example about the unsupervised learning. Because uh, we don't know about the, how we can classify our data set. And also maybe maybe support vector machine gonna be the unsupervised learning tool because we don't know how we can optimize the classification about our observations. We don't know anything about the target variable have to be classified based on the base the data attribute. We don't know that. So in that case, we have to use the super unsupervised learning. So that's the kind of thing. So, and then uh, in here, in here actually, uh, the mentions about the example about the divide the customer into the different homogeneous group. So mo mostly unsupervised learning is for the classifications. Classification of the, our, our data. So, so that's the kind of thing. So identifying groups and identifying the products. These are the kind of uh, things.
-hmm. And also, also recently in our computer science and the data science uh, field, we actually, there is also emerging field uh, called uh, reinforced learning. Yeah, reinforced, not, not machine learning, reinforced learning. Hmm. Actually, I'm not, I'm not sure about the exact definition about the, this one. And also, also the other thing is the combining, combining the supervised and unsupervised learning together right. inside the one model. This is uh, what is called the uh, ensemble hmm. approaches learning approaches. These are the very, very complex and complicated learning approaches. Maybe I think that there is uh, some field that frequently use the, these kind of approaches, but I'm not sure actually how we can apply it to the, this model, but I know that there is a very, a few, few, a few books that actually explain about the, what these are the about, but in here, mm -hmm. In this book, actually, just kind of focusing on the supervised and unsupervised learning. So that's the thing. And then uh, what's the roadmap is uh, we just uh, try to try to do by the chapter every week, and then uh, and then hopefully we can actually cover uh, uh, one chapter by uh, one chapter per week, and then uh, finishing it maybe after twenty two weeks, which is uh, just less than five months. We can learn everything about the, this book, hopefully. And then today, as you can see, I, actually I'm not familiar with the Git, Git and GitHub. So I did not prepare my presentation slide. But the thing is, it is totally up to you to prepare your presentations or maybe you can use the, maybe I have actually pen tablet in my, uh, connected to my computer. So that's the reason why I, I can write right on the website, in the, on mm -hmm. the screen. But the thing is, if you have a pen tablet, you can use the pen tablet to explain, uh, explain the, your, uh, your, uh, the, the chapter, uh, just kind of uh, writing, the, writing the, uh, your stuff uh, on, the, on the screen, or maybe you can prepare to the, to the GitHub presentation slide. And then uh, it's totally up to you. So just for your convenience, yeah, just feel free to do that. Cause uh, our goal in here is to uh, learn machine learning and then uh, study this book. Not the kind of, uh, maybe it might be, it might be awesome cause uh, in this community actually likes to keep the record or keep the note for the each book, which is nice. But the thing is for me, like I'm not, familiar with the Git and GitHub kind of a software, cause uh, I don't want to mess up the, their, their kind of a, maybe Git and GitHub kind of a system. So, so I just prefer to use the, this kind of a writing, writing on the screen, but hopefully maybe while I studying this book, maybe I might be learn about the, how to use the Git and GitHub in R Studio. Cause uh, John actually gave me the link for the, how to do, prepare for the, your, uh, prepare the slide or presentation uh, in, uh, by using the Git and R Studio and GitHub. It is basically about the just kind of a book down kind of a thing. So uh, hopefully I'm gonna learn uh, uh, those things and then uh, maybe in the later, later in the near future, I'm gonna try to prepare my R book down for the, this book chapter, not the kind of a writing on the screen uh, using the pen. But, but still, but still, even if I prepared my presentation slide, I might use the, my pen too. Maybe if I can write, wanted to write something on my screen. So I'm gonna use that one cause I have a pen tablet. So I can Ooh. use, I, I'm gonna use those things. Maybe just try to try to explain explain clearly about about the chapter contents to you and other study members. So 
So that's the thing. And then we're going to meet together every week. And then we're going to study each chapter for one hour, hopefully. And then uh, finishing the one chapter per week is going to be our goal. But depending on the amount of the pages in the each chapter, maybe we can split that chapter into the two parts. So that's the kind of thing. So any questions or anything you want to ask? Uh, OK, I just posted. Yeah. Uh, some links that could help with the presentation notes. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is called Happy Git with R. Mm, yeah, okay. I know. Yeah, that's the, no, that's that the link. Yeah, that's the link the John gave me. So right, right. Yeah. That, that that's the most you know uh, uh, use uh, resource for uh, working yeah, right. with Git with R. You know, with R Studio. Yeah, and, so and I'm, the other yeah, name, actually, yeah, actually, I'm gonna. I actually studying this book for now so right. yeah and then the other one is uh the github that comes with this uh text with this reference yes yeah, right right is the koala verse yeah so basically what you do okay is that yeah. i have you know i have a github account for example mm -hmm. and what i do is that i fork in other words i copy yeah yeah i copy right. this this uh you know this uh repo repository to my own repository and then mm -hmm. I can do any changes in mine that won't affect the, you know, the one that I fork. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that that way you're not going to introduce anything that the yeah. authors don't want, you know, to include here because they have, yeah. you know, control over here. Okay? Yeah. Right. So that that that's the way that we have been doing for other book clubs. Yeah. That you know, we we identify the GitHub, and yeah. then we fork it. Yeah. And then we do the you know, the, the, the changes that we want to do, we do mm -hmm. it in our uh, yeah. copy, not in their copy. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe hopefully by the next week, or maybe I'm going to try to follow, mm -hmm. follow the these yeah. in, instruction and then hopefully I can make the, make the presentation slide for the chapter two uh, mm -hmm. by using this step. So, and then, and then also I'm going to try to, Learn how I can set up the my Git and GitHub into my computer, and then also mm -hmm. iStudio, and then right. I try to try to do the do the some note and then uh, I book down kind of a document for the future purposes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So mm -hmm. okay, so that's part the part thing. Of the learning, learning yeah. process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. So. It's the 7.57, uh, 7.57, so it's almost time. So mm -hmm. I hope to see you next week. So I'm going to cover the chapter two mm -hmm. for the next week. And then hopefully maybe we will get, we will get more people in the study group. But sure. the thing is, anyway, the chapter two, I'm going to cover the chapter two of the dead book uh, for the next week. And then uh, so chapter three, you gonna cover the chapter three, and then uh, mm -hmm. that's the that's the how we start. So thank you very much, and then and then see you next week. Next week, okay. Yep. Okay. Goodbye. Have a great Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have a have a good have a good Sunday. So have a good weekend. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>